Claire and this is the Martian book versus movie. This is a new feature I've been wanting to do for a while where I look at a book and its on-screen adaptation be it a TV show, a film or a web series and I'm going to start with The Martian by Andy Weir which was made into a film with Matt Damon directed by Ridley Scott. The Martian is the story of astronaut Mark Wapney who is on a mission to Mars when he becomes stranded on the red planet and basically he only has his scientific knowledge to help him survive whilst he tries to contact Earth and figure out how he can be rescued. The story of the film The Martian is fairly faithful to the original book but as with every page to screen adaptation there is a big change in the narrative structure just to make the story fit the medium of a motion picture. The most obvious change between the book and the movie is the point of view. In the book we spend quite a bit of time in Mark Watney's first person point of view as he logs all of his um, daily activities and all the science that he's doing into the hub computer. I think the way that they did it where they had Matt Damon talking to camera to record his daily log worked really well and the performance was really quite impressive but they couldn't have had as much of it in the film as they had in the book. In the book you spend so much time in Mark Watney's first person point of view at the beginning of the book that it's quite a shock when another point of view is introduced in third person whereas in the movie they introduce other characters uh, much earlier and because everybody is being filmed in third person, it really is more seamless. I think the points of view work a lot better in the film, it's a lot more balanced. In the book, you need that uh, really engrossing first person point of view of what needs to make you really, really care about him and what's going on. But in the movie, because you get to see how difficult uh, his situation is and because you get to see the terrible Martian landscape and how foreign that is, I think that kind of uh, helps with really feeling on Watney's side. Now my favorite change that the film made from the book is that they started earlier and they ended later. In the book we open with Watney like, discovering that he's been left on Mars, that he's been stranded and swearing a lot and trying to figure out things. In the film we start just a little bit before that in story time when all the astronauts from the Ares 3 crew are still on Mars and they're collecting rocks and doing science together and having some banter and you get to see this really tense moment where the storm hits and they all try to leave and Watney is blown away by the storm and they all think he's dead and it's terrible and that is just such an emotional moment it really hooks you and uh, really makes you feel for all the characters in the story and not just Watney. You get to kind of meet the crew and they feel a lot more real in your head and they feel like a lot bigger of a character than they do in the book where you only really see them through Watney's eyes for the most part. And then the ending. Now the ending in the book I've always felt was quite abrupt. I just felt really frustrated and I wanted to know more. In the movie they kind of keep that ending moment that we've got in the book but they add something of an epilogue. We jump forward in time, we get to see the characters that we've gotten to know reacting to another event at NASA and we kind of get to see where they are now in their lives. There are a lot of characters in this film and it's nice to see kind of what happens to them. Another interesting difference between the film and the book is the pace of both of those stories. Now when I read the book I could not put it down. The movie is two hours and 20 minutes and I did not see the time go. In the book even though I was never bored of the story I could definitely feel that time was passing within the story and in the film the same amount of time elapses within the story. It's about two years, I think it's something like 500 or 600 days but you don't feel that as much in the movie just because it's so fast paced because there's so much uh, cutting back and forth between Earth and Mars I felt like I was missing something of 
the weariness and the, the exhaustion of all the characters. So that's for the basic narrative structure of the book versus the film and how they work out. Now a few more things that I want to talk about are first of all the character of Mark Watney. One of the main complaints that I've seen about this book online uh, from people that really didn't enjoy it that much was that they didn't find Watney's character likeable, they found him smug and not that funny. When I first listened to the story on audiobook, I completely didn't hear any of that because I was completely engrossed in the story and worried for Watney and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when I listened to it again recently, I thought, oh, I can kind of see where people are, are coming from with this. In the film, you get Matt Damon's performance as Watney. You get to see how exhausted he is, how beaten up and demoralized he is, and sometimes when he makes a joke or when he says something that can sound smug, you kind of see that there is a contrast between what he's saying and like the look on his face. Sometimes he's just basically bolstering himself up because he's terrified and you can see that a lot more in the film than you can in the book. I think in the book it's present as an underlying thing but it's not as obvious. And this brings me to another point, which is that this movie is hilarious. I think it makes sense that the filmmakers would want to make the movie quite funny to balance the fact that there is quite a lot of science exposition in the film. Even though there's a lot less science in the film than in the book, it's still a lot more science than you would get in a regular Hollywood movie. And now we come to the science. I don't know how easy all of the science in the film would be to understand if you hadn't read the book, because obviously I've read it twice and I kind of remembered all of the big uh, scientific issues that happened in the film. By removing some of the scientific obstacles in Watney's way, they're able to devote a lot more time to the issues that he does run into. So it's not that they actually spend ages on each problem, it's just that when they do have a problem that they run into, they spend the appropriate time to explain it. And because it's still quite tense, it doesn't really seem like a very strenuous explanation. One of my favorite things in the film was the soundtrack. Uh, basically, it takes the captain's damn disco music joke from the book, but obviously it uses the actual music. And the contrast between these incredibly cheerful and cheesy disco tunes and a terrible, terrible situation that Watney is in uh, is just kind of hilarious and great comic relief. So those were my thoughts on The Martian, the book versus the movie. I really, really enjoyed both of them. If you have seen the movie but you haven't read the book, I definitely recommend picking it up uh, because you get a lot more into Watney's point of view, into the science. You have a lot more suspense because the time that you spend on Mars with Watney just feels like a lot longer. It's not that it's boring, it's that the time has a real weight behind it. And if you've read the book and you're worried about the movie ruining everything or you didn't like it that much because Watney was smug, I would definitely encourage you to go and check out the movie because I think it solved a lot of the problems that the book had and it still stayed fairly faithful to uh, the story of the book. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more book versus film slash TV show slash web series and if you have any ideas of things you'd like me to talk about. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know if you've seen or read The Martian and what you thought. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check the sidebar right here for more videos. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.